And another good morning to you. It's great to be uh, back to bring God's word to you on this Sunday morning. It's May 3rd, May already. It's great to see May here. And just a, a quick announcement before we get uh, any farther along. Uh, I'll make a, a couple of announcements at, at the end, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, next Sunday morning is Mother's Day, and we're going to have a, a drive-in service next Sunday morning for Mother's Day. So uh, it'll be uh, wonderful to see everybody drive up in their cars. We'll set up outside. And of course, uh, I say, Lord willing and weather permitting, we will, we will do that. So 1030, regular time here at the church, a drive-in service. We'll have a sound system set up, and we will uh, have a great time together once again. Today I'm kicking off a brand new sermon series that's entitled Savoring the Savior. And it's based on a book that has uh, meant a lot to me now for, for a few years. And it's called uh, Seeing and Savoring Jesus Christ. It's written by uh, John Piper. And so the, sermon, so the series is based on this book. There are uh, 13 chapters in the book. But I'm not going to do 13 sermons based on each chapter, but uh, this will be probably a, a six or seven sermon series uh, based on the overall themes of, of this book. And I've read this book probably four times. It's a great uh, devotion. Uh, it's a great reminder for myself just to gaze on the glory of Christ. And uh, another thing I like about this book is that it's relatively uh, short. Uh, its 13 chapters are contained in about 120 pages, and so each chapter is like five or seven pages in length. And so for a guy like me with a short attention span, uh, it, works out, it works out great. And I have a few copies of these in my library, so if you would like to borrow one to, to read, uh, just let me know, and I'd be happy to loan one to you, or of course you can find them uh, online. I would recommend that anybody have it in their uh, personal uh, collection. Again, it's Seeing and Savoring Jesus Christ. It's written by uh, John Piper. So sermon series, Savoring the Savior, is based on um, this book. So I'm excited about to, to bring this sermon series to you. So let's get started with a verse of scripture for today. We're gonna, actually going to look at a couple of verses. Psalm 34, verse 8 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And also, let's look at Psalm chapter 119 and verse 103 that says, How sweet are your words, or how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for today. Thank you for the privilege and the honor that it is to to stand here and to bring your word, to bring encouragement. Lord, I pray that you would shine the light of your grace on us today, that your word would be revealed in a powerful way. Lord, that we will see with spiritual eyes the goodness of God, that we will truly taste and see that the Lord is good. Lord, I pray that you would speak clearly through me today and that your will will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, like, like I said, the, the sermon series is based on the book by John Piper, Seeing and Savoring Jesus Christ, and uh, I can't recommend it highly enough, and so, again, if you would like to read it, just let me know and uh, make sure that you're able to do so. More than anything, and I, and I say that honestly and truthfully, more than anything, I want to understand God. I want my understanding and my knowledge of God to grow. I want to have a relationship with God that, that deepens as it progresses. And I hope that that's what you want for your life as well. There should really be no greater desire for anyone who has called upon the name of the Lord, who walks with him, than to deepen and strengthen our relationship with with him, and I long for you to have more understanding. Uh, I hope that you would desire to have a deeper relationship with him as well. 
And in my life, I want to, I want to know him that I might savor him. And as a pastor, one of my greatest desires is that you would never, ever, ever be, that you would never be content with, with just being saved. And you might say, well, Brian, isn't that what it's all about, to, to be saved? Well, that's, that's the start, for sure. But we move on from there. We, we grow, and we grow deeper. But my heart's desire for you is that you would cry out with a, a deeper desire to know him, that you would savor him. And so what does it mean, and what do I mean when I say savor, to savor him? Well, I would not call myself a food connoisseur in the least. And I think I've talked about this before because I like talking about food, so it's probably come up in another sermon or in conversation for sure. But uh, a great burger will keep me talking about it and the place where I got it for some time. And I'll recommend that place because there are some places that just get burgers right. Now there are some there are some donuts that excite me as as well. And then there's always my mom's white pie that I have made reference to many times as well. And again, I think I've mentioned this that when I'm eating something that I enjoy so much. Uh, I'll just hum. I'll just hum along. Sometimes it might turn into a moan of enjoyment. You ever, you ever watch a dog? <laughs> I'm not comparing myself or anybody else to a dog, but when, when they're eating, they'll like, nom, 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 nom. You ever experience that? That's kind of what I experience when I have a good burger or some donuts or my mom's white pie. I, I savor every bite and it's and it's an experience i know you know don't sit there and judge me like you've never experienced that before either there are foods that, that you like that you feel that way about food as well to savor means to taste and enjoy completely so is there something is there someone in your life that you savor you know, it's pretty difficult to dwell on something of which I'm unfamiliar. And so that's why I generally will stay out of political conversation because I just don't really understand enough to get fully involved in conversations of a political nature. And today with all that's going on around us and this being an election year, you know, Sometimes it's hard to determine what is uh, politically motivated and what's not. And I, you know, I feel the same way about um, car engines and, and shopping trips. You know, there's, there's really, there's little to, to no interest. And so I don't savor those things. I don't dwell on those things. You know, when somebody, pops a hood of the car, you know, and they can be in awe of what's going on there. And I can be, I can be like, what's that, 16 valve? 16, 17, whatever it takes? Because that's about what, you know, that's my knowledge. It's, it's, it's so minute when it comes to, <laughs> to those things. Now, if you want to talk about baseball, you want to talk about tennis, you want to talk about Christian music or or vinyl records, or if you want to talk about my wife or my kids or or my grandkids, now, now these are things that I that I savor. These are things that I thoroughly enjoy and that I can dwell on. And as as important to me as those things are, of course, some of those more important than than others. But as more important as those things are to me, these things, they pale in comparison to my desire to, to know Jesus. And I mean really know Jesus. There are a lot of conversations that my wife and I have 
that I actually will finish her sentence. Not that I jump in and, and out, of, out of rudeness, but it's out, out of familiarity. We know each other that well. I can, if she doesn't know where a conversation's going, I can sometimes finish that thought for her. And in John chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, this is what Jesus says. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And verse 4 says, when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. I love that. I want to know I want to know Jesus so well that I can differentiate his voice than from all the other voices around me that are attempting to distract me. And just like a great marriage hinges on quality time together, consistent time together, communicating with each other, serving each other, and I will even say uh, trying to outserve the other, what a great thing that would be. My husband just keeps trying to outsurf me. I love that. Much can be the same about a deep relationship with Jesus Christ. It hinges on quality and consistent time in his presence, gazing upon him. And it's in that place when we're gazing upon Jesus, it's in that place that we see the goodness of God. We see the joy that he brings to our life. And even in, in the midst of the various trials that life brings, you can come to savor Jesus more and more. In another book that I that I love to read, my one of my favorite uh, Pastors, teachers, evangelists, uh, A.W. Tozer, <clears throat> uh, if he's been dead as long as I've been alive, in his book, The Pursuit of God, this is what he writes. When we lift our inward eyes to gaze upon God, we are sure to meet friendly eyes gazing back at us. For it is written that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. The sweet language of experience is, you, O oh God, see me. And when the eyes of the soul looking out to meet the eyes of God looking in, heaven has begun here on earth. End quote. Oh, I love that. I love the picture of that as, the, as our gaze looks out to God. God's eyes see us, and we see him seeing us. Us. And there are some that might be uh, hearing me today who would say, you can't know God like that. God is not the kind that would come and dwell intimately with a human. Well, I would say to you, then you've never been in the presence of God. But there are some, too, that have this deeper desire. There are some that I, that I know, that I speak with, that they have this desire to have a deeper, more intimate, special relationship with God through Jesus. And unfortunately, there are those who only know God through the assurance of, of salvation. And I hope that I'm never, ever guilty of being neutral about Jesus. I hope I never give you the impression that there might be a better way than Jesus. How cruel would that be? Seeing and savoring Jesus is the most important kind of seeing and savoring that you and I could ever do. More important than savoring a great burger, more important than the success of your favorite team, 
more important than savoring your latest purchase. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, the writer of Hebrews says this, that about Jesus, he is the radiance of God's glory. And he is the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. There are a lot of verses in scripture that talk about the, the power of God, but I don't know of any, any sentence in scripture that describes the power and the beauty and brightness of Christ more than Hebrews 1.3. You know, with our physical eyes, we can see and savor things. Yeah, a good meal, uh, the beauty of, of the, the Grand Canyon. You know, when we go to St. Louis, I, I, after all these years, I am still in awe when I see the Gateway Arch. That it's, it's just an amazing feat. So we can see and we can savor things with our eyes. But my hope is, my question to you today and to me as we go forward, can you and I with spiritual eyes, can we grasp the beauty of the one who is the radiance of God's glory. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Paul is giving a prayer for the church in Ephesus. And this is what he says in Ephesians 3, 18 and 19. For you being rooted and grounded, grounded in love may have strength to comprehend, remember that word, the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The word comprehend, the word comprehend means to, to see, to make sense of, to perceive, to interpret, to get one's head around, <clears throat> to see the light or to get the picture. Paul is saying, I hope you can get your head around the glory and the beauty of Christ. Jesus himself spoke about those who could see and those who could not see. And he often spoke to the multitudes in, in parables. And a parable is a, a story which conveys a heavenly truth. And in, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 10, his disciples are asking him about the parables. Because sometimes they were perplexed as to why he would, he would speak in this way. So Matthew 13, 10, this is what Jesus told his disciples. He says, to you, it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But to them, it has not been given. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing, they do not see, and hearing, they do not hear nor understand. We're talking about two different kinds of seeing and hearing. The multitudes, those who do not know Christ, they don't see with spiritual eyes as those who are born again do. They only see with their physical eyes, but in seeing, they do not see, and in hearing, they do not hear or understand. So if you are born again in Christ, it has been given to you by the indwelling Holy Spirit to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. It is God who gives the ability to see with spiritual eyes or with the eyes of the soul. And those who are not born again cannot see in this manner. Only those who have been given the gift of eternal, of eternal life in Christ. And for those of us with spiritual eyes, born again, new creation in Christ, for those of us that have been given the ability to see, he wants us to be aware that we have this gift, that we have this ability to see in the Spirit. And he wants us to, to open them. That our gaze 
is not beyond the physical on that that's just around us, but that our gaze would be directed to, to the beauty and the magnitude of God, of God's glory through Christ. And to, to comprehend it, to wrap our head around the magnitude of, of who he is. And of course, none of us can completely grasp the, the magnitude of God while living in this temporary body of ours that's getting older and getting closer uh, to deteriorating every day. We have limited uh, capacity. Uh, God wouldn't even let Moses see him in his full glory, but only just a portion of him. But as we, as followers of Christ, and I hope that you get this, as we, as followers of Christ, as we, as we press in, in his presence, in humility, with a heart of thanksgiving, with a, a hunger to know him and dwelling there, going into that place, not getting in a hurry, but remaining there, calling on his name. In that place, there is fullness of joy. There is a deeper, more intimate relationship waiting those who desire it. There are those who are willing to, to wait while gazing upon him and savoring his beauty and his goodness and his holiness. If you truly want to know Jesus, and in knowing him that you will savor him to enjoy him completely, that's it. To savor him, to enjoy him completely, to dwell on him. Are you only saved by grace? And I, I, I don't say that lightly because being saved by grace, that's, that's, that's the beginning. Without being saved by grace, of course, there's no inheritance, there's no eternal life. But if all you are is saved by grace and you haven't gone from the drinking of milk to meteor Meteor lifestyle of knowing Christ in discipleship. More than any other desire, I hope that you would have would be a deeper relationship with Him, savoring the moments that you spend with Him and just and basking, basking in the radiance of His very presence. You know, warmer temperatures are right here, the sun starting to shine. More and more. How often do we just want to go outside and just, just bask in the sun and its warmth and its light? Unattainable. Unattainable to have this kind of a relationship with God. Well, may it never, ever be spoken from my lips that an intimate, personal, growing, personal, passionate relationship with Jesus is unattainable. May it never be spoken. In fact, the invitation from God himself is to come boldly into his presence with, in his presence with confidence in his grace, to know him, to taste, to see that he is good, that we would savor him above all else. And I think it's accurate to say that each one of us is at a, a different uh, place on the, the path in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven. And there are some that I know that are ready to, to dive in and plunge wholeheartedly into knowing God this way. Others are, are content to be saved. Yet they miss out on the adventure and the immeasurable blessing of going deeper with God. And still others fall someplace in between. But I hope that today's sermon and the ones that will follow over the next few weeks, I hope that they'll create a hunger in you that you will desire a deeper 
experience with God. Because there is, there is so much more. From the moment we get saved to the moment we see him face to face, there's always more to experience with God. There's always deeper to go with God. And he's waiting for you and me. He's waiting for us to come into his presence with that, that, that hunger to know him and to see him and to savor him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today again. And Lord, I, my hope is that through the Holy Spirit, that Lord, you would draw, you would draw people into you with understanding that they would be able to wrap their head around this idea of going deeper with you, to have a more intimate, powerful, unique relationship with you. Not just thinking, well, there's a God out there and he had a, he had a son that died for the world. But that each of us can come into this place of intimacy, knowing you, experiencing your radiance, the, the magnitude of who you are, the beauty of who you are, and just with the eyes of our soul, gazing, gazing and staying there where we are just in awe of who you are. Lord, create that in each one of us. Draw us to that place, Lord, where we are no longer content with just the status quo, but that we would have a, a hunger to know your word, to know you in your presence, and to make you known to others. Let the radiance of Jesus Christ be seen, and may it be experienced in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, again, if you have any questions about uh, really uh, anything pertaining to this message or the spiritual nature, uh, no political questions, uh, please. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, send me an email, brian at fbcwoodlawn.org, brian at fbcwoodlawn.org. And remember, next Sunday, Mother's Day, uh, we will be here. Uh, hopefully everybody will be here physically. We're going to have a drive-in service uh, next Sunday morning at 1030. It'll be a wonderful time together. So I hope that you can come and be a part of that. And also, uh, we created a, a brand new church newsletter this past week. It went out in the mail on Friday. So hopefully you will receive that uh, very early in the week. If you don't get it, uh, please let me know. Again, send me an email and I'll make sure that you are on the list to get those. Even if you're not a member of, of this church, you want to know what's going on at our church, or if you live, if you're seeing this and you live far away in another state, and you want to know what's going on in our neck of the woods, well, again, send me an email, brian at fbcwoodlawn.org, and we'll make sure that we send one out to you. It's been great to be back with you again. I wish and pray God's biggest, richest, blessings on you this week. Have a great week. Take care.